CIET NCERT presents Contemporary India The audio textbook in geography for class 10 part 2 Chapter 3 Water resources This chapter has 11 pages This chapter is read by Shiba Mal Page 23 Chapter 3 Water resources Friends, let us begin this chapter with a conversation between two children, Pinky and Chintu. Let us listen to their conversation. Hey Pinky, did you see those awesome TV reports on floods in Odisha? My god, what havoc they have created. It has destroyed and swept away everything in its path. Yes, Chintu, I did. Isn't it strange? that water can give life and take life as well what should we do without water we need water to drink cook our food wash our clothes and wash ourselves as well my father was telling me that in his factory they need a lot of water for a number of things did you know that they even need water for cooling the machines in fact The factory runs on the power supplied by the Heidel power plant. Now I can understand why through the ages we humans have chosen to live near water courses along the rivers and other water sources like springs, lakes, ponds and oases. So it was the conversation. Now we read from the text. You already know that 3/4 of the earth's surface is covered with water but only a small proportion of it accounts for fresh water that can be put to use This fresh water is mainly obtained from surface runoff and ground water that is continually being renewed and recharged through the hydrological cycle All water moves within the hydrological cycle ensuring that water is a renewable resource. You might wonder that if 3/4 of the world is covered with water and water is a renewable resource then how is it that countries and regions around the globe suffer from water scarcity? Why is it predicted that by 2025 Nearly 2 billion people will live in absolute water scarcity. Water. Some facts and figures. First, here in the box some facts are given about water. 96.5% of the total volume of world's water is estimated to exist as oceans and only 2.5% as fresh water. Nearly 70% of this fresh water occurs as ice sheets and glaciers in Antarctica, Greenland and the mountainous regions of the world. While a little less than 30% is stored as groundwater in the world's aquifers. Second, India receives nearly 4% of the global precipitation and ranks 133 in the world in terms of water availability per person per annum third the total renewable water resources of india are estimated at 1897 square kilometer per annum fourth point by 2025 it is predicted that large parts of india will join countries or regions having absolute water scarcity source the un world water development report 2003 page 24 water scarcity and the need for water conservation and management given the abundance and renewability of water it is difficult to imagine that we may suffer from water scarcity The moment we speak of water shortages we immediately associate it with regions having low rainfall or those that are drought prone we instantaneously visualize the deserts of Rajasthan and women balancing many matkas that is 
earthen pots used for collecting and storing water and travelling long distances to get water true the availability of water resources varies over space and time mainly due to the variations in seasonal and annual precipitation but water scarcity in most cases is caused by over exploitation excessive use and unequal access to water among different social groups figure 3.1 there are three pictures given showing water scarcity this picture begins with a caption water water everywhere not a drop to drink it further explains after a heavy downpour a boy collects drinking water in kolkata life in the city and its adjacent districts was paralyzed as incessant overnight rain meaning a record 180 mm flooded vast area and disrupted traffic Second picture shows a Kashmiri earthquake survivor who is carrying a water in the snow in a devastated village. Another picture is given here depicting water scarcity. Here an information is given in the box. According to Falkenmark, a Swedish expert, water stress occurs when water availability is between 1000 and 1600 cubic meter per person per year page 25 from the text where is then water scarcity likely to occur as you have read in the hydrological cycle fresh water can be obtained directly from precipitation surface runoff and groundwater Is it possible that an area or region may have ample water resources but is still facing water scarcity? Many of our cities are such examples. Thus, water scarcity may be an outcome of large and growing population and consequent greater demands for water and unequal access to it. A large population means more water not only for domestic use but also to produce more food hence to facilitate higher food grain production water resources are being overexploited to expand irrigated areas and dry season agriculture you may have seen in many television advertisements that most farmers have their own wells and tube wells in their farms for irrigation to increase their produce but have you ever wondered what this could result in that it may lead to falling groundwater levels adversely affecting water availability and food security of the people post independent india witnessed intensive industrialization and urbanization creating vast opportunities for us today large industrial houses are as common place as the industrial units of many mnc's that is multinational corporations the ever increasing number of industries has made matters worse by exerting pressure on existing freshwater resources industries apart from being heavy users of water also require power to run them much of this energy comes from hydroelectric power today in india hydroelectric power contributes approximately 22% of the total electricity produced moreover multiplying urban centers with large and dense populations and urban lifestyles have not only added to water and energy requirements but have further aggravated the problem if you look into the housing societies or colonies in the cities you would find that most of these have their own groundwater pumping devices to meet their water needs not surprisingly we find that fragile water resources are being overexploited and have caused their depletion in several of these cities so far we have focused on the quantitative aspects of water scarcity 
Now let us consider another situation where water is sufficiently available to meet the needs of the people. But the area still suffers from water scarcity. This scarcity may be due to bad quality of water. Lately, there has been a growing concern that even if there is ample water to meet the needs of the people, much of it may be polluted by domestic and industrial wastes, chemicals, pesticides and fertilizers used in agriculture, thus making it hazardous for human use. Now from the box. India's rivers, especially the smaller ones, have all turned into toxic streams. And even the big ones like the Ganga and Yamuna are far from being pure. The assault on India's rivers from population growth, agricultural modernization, urbanization and industrialization is enormous and growing by the day. This entire life stands threatened. Source, The Citizen's Fifth Report, CSC, 1999. Now from the text again. You may have already realized that the need of the hour is to conserve and manage our water resources, to safeguard ourselves from health hazards, to ensure food security, continuation of our livelihoods and productive activities and also to prevent degradation of our natural ecosystems. Overexploitation and mismanagement of water resources will impoverish this resource and cause ecological crisis that may have profound impact on our lives. For better understanding of the topic, an activity is given here. The activity is, From your everyday experiences, Write a short proposal on how you can conserve water. Page 26 Multipurpose River Projects and Integrated Water Resources Management But how do we conserve and manage water? Archaeological and historical records show that from ancient times, we've been constructing sophisticated hydraulic structures like dams built of stone rubble, reservoirs or lakes, embankments and canals for irrigation. Not surprisingly, we have continued this tradition in modern India by building dams in most of our river basins. From the box. Hydraulic structures in ancient India. First, in the 1st century BC, Stringavaripura near Allahabad has sophisticated water harvesting system channeling the flood water of the river Ganga. Second, during the time of Chandragupta Maurya, dams, lakes and irrigation systems were extensively built. Third, evidences of sophisticated irrigation works have also been found in Kalinga, Odisha, Nagarjun Konda, Andhra Pradesh, Benur, Karnataka, Kolapur, Maharashtra, etc. Fourth, in the 11th century, Bhopal Lake, one of the largest artificial lakes of its time, was built. Fifth, in the 14th century, the tank in Hoskas, Delhi, was constructed by Iltutmish for supplying water to Siri Fort area. Source Dying Wisdom, CSE 1997. Here is a picture given showing Hirakud Dam, figure 3.2. What are dams and how do they help us in conserving and managing water? Dams were traditionally built to impound rivers and rainwater that could be used later to irrigate agricultural fields. Today, dams are built not just for irrigation but for electricity generation, water supply for domestic and industrial uses, flood control, recreation, inland navigation and fish breeding. 
Hence, dams are now referred to as multi-purpose projects where the many uses of the impounded water and integrated with one another. For example, in Satlaj Bias River Basin, the Bhakra Nangal project water is being used both for hydropower production and irrigation. Similarly, the Hirakud project in the Mahanadi Basin integrates conservation of water with flood control. From the box, a dam is a barrier across flowing water that obstructs, directs or retards the water, often creating a reservoir, lake or impoundment. Dam refers to the reservoir rather than the structure. Most dams have a section called a spillway or weir over which or through which it is intended that water will flow either intermittently or continuously. Dams are classified according to structure, intended purpose or height. Based on structure and the materials used, dams are classified as timber dams, embankment dams or masonry dams with several subtypes. According to the height, dam can be categorized as large dams and major dams or alternatively as low dams, medium height dams or high dams. From the text, multipurpose projects launched after independence with their integrated water resources management approach were thought of as the vehicle that would lead the nation to development and progress overcoming the handicap of its colonial past. Jawaharlal Nehru proudly proclaimed the dams as the temples of modern India. The reason being that it would integrate development of agriculture and the village economy with rapid industrialization and growth of the urban economy. From the box. This popular Bhadu song, in the Damodar Valley region, narrates the problems faced by people owing to the flooding of Damodar River, known as the River of Sorrow. We have sown the crops in Asar. We will bring Bhado in Bhadra. Floods have swollen in Damodar. The sailing boats cannot sail. O oh, Damodar, we fall at your feet. Reduce the floods a little. Bhado will come a year later. Let the boats sail on your surface. From the text. In the recent years, multipurpose projects and large dams have come under great scrutiny and opposition for a variety of reasons. Regulating and damming of rivers affect their natural flow, causing poor sediment flow and excessive sedimentation at the bottom of the reservoir resulting in rockier stream beds and poorer habitats for the river's aquatic life. Dams also fragment rivers, making it difficult for aquatic fauna to migrate, especially for spawning. The reservoirs that are created on the floodplains also submerge the existing vegetation and soil, leading to its decomposition over a period of time. Multipurpose projects and large dams have also been the cause of many new social movements like the Narmada Bachao Andolan and the Terry Dam Andolan, etc. Resistance to these projects has primarily been due to the large-scale displacement of local communities. Local people often had to give up their land livelihood and their meagre access and control over resources for the greater good of the nation. So, if the local people are not benefiting from such projects, then who is benefited? Perhaps the landowners and large farmers, industrialists and few urban centres. Take the case of the landless in a village. Does he really gain from such a project? From the box. Narmada Bachao Andolan or Save Narmada Movement is a non governmental organization, that is, NGO, that mobilized 
tribal people, farmers, environmentalists and human rights activists against the Sardar Sarovar Dam being built across the Narmada River in Gujarat. It originally focused on the environmental issues related to trees that would be submerged under the dam water. Recently, it has refocused the aim to enable poor citizens, especially the Austies, those are the displaced people, to get full rehabilitation facilities from the government. People felt that their suffering would not be in vain, accepted the trauma of displacement, believing in the promise of irrigated fields and plentiful harvests. So, often the survivors of Rihand told us that they accepted their sufferings as sacrifice for the sake of their nation. But now, after 30 bitter years of being adrift, their livelihood having been more precarious. They keep asking, are we the only ones chosen to make sacrifices for the nation? Source, S. Sharma, quoted in the belly of the river, Tribal Conflicts over Development in Narmada Valley. A. Bhaviskar, 1995 from the text. Irrigation has also changed the cropping pattern of many regions with farmers shifting to water-intensive and commercial crops. This has great ecological consequences like salinization of the soil. At the same time, it has transformed the social landscape that is, increasing the social gap between the richer landowners and the landless poor. As we can see, the dams did create conflicts between people wanting different uses and benefits from the same water resources. In Gujarat, the Sabarmati Basin, the farmers agitated and almost caused a riot over the higher priority given to water supply in urban areas, particularly during droughts. Interstate water disputes are also becoming common with regard to sharing the costs and benefits of the multipurpose project. Page 27 Activity Find out more about any one traditional method of building dams and irrigation works. Page 28 Given here is a map of India showing the major rivers and the dams. Page 29 Do you know that the Krishna Godavari dispute is due to the objections raised by Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh governments? It is regarding the diversion of more water at Koena by Maharashtra government for a multipurpose project. This would reduce downstream flow in their states with adverse consequences for agriculture and industry. Activity Make a list of interstate water disputes. Now, from the text again. Most of the objections to the projects arose due to their failure to achieve the purposes for which they were built. Ironically, the dams that were constructed to control floods have triggered floods due to sedimentation in the reservoir. Moreover, the big dams have mostly been unsuccessful in controlling floods at the time of excessive rainfall. You may have seen or read how the release of water from dams during heavy rains aggravated the flood situation in Maharashtra and Gujarat in 2006. The floods have not only devastated life and property, but also caused extensive soil erosion. Sedimentation also meant that the flood plains were deprived of silt, a natural fertilizer further adding on to the problem of land degradation. It was also observed that the multipurpose projects induced earthquakes, caused waterborne diseases and pests and pollution resulting from excessive use of water. 
Here we have a collage containing news regarding devastation caused by floods. Rainwater Harvesting Many thought that given the disadvantages and rising resistance against the multipurpose projects, water harvesting system was a viable alternative, both socio-economically and environmentally. In ancient India, along with the sophisticated hydraulic structures, there existed an extraordinary tradition of water harvesting system. People had in-depth knowledge of rainfall regimes and soil types and developed wide-ranging techniques to harvest rainwater, groundwater, river water and flood water in keeping with the local ecological conditions and their water needs. In hill and mountainous regions, people built diversion channels like the guls or kuls of the western Himalayas for agriculture. Rooftop rainwater harvesting was commonly practiced to store drinking water, particularly in Rajasthan. In the flood plains of Bengal, people developed inundation channels to irrigate their fields. In arid and semi-arid regions, agricultural fields were converted into rain-fed storage structures that allowed the water to stand and moisten the soil like the Khadins in Jaisalmer and Johads in other parts of Rajasthan. Page 30 Figure 3.3 .3. Here, given is a cartoon that inspires us to practice rainwater harvesting. Figure 3.4 There are two diagrams showing various methods of rainwater harvesting. Diagram A. Recharge through hand pump. Diagram B. Recharge through abandoned dug well. Rooftop rainwater is collected using a PVC pipe. Filtered using sand and bricks. Underground pipe takes water to sump for immediate usage. Excess water from the sump is taken to the well. Water from the well recharges the underground. Take water from the well later. Page 31 Figure 3.5 A picture of traditional method of rainwater harvesting is given here. A kul leads to a circular village tank as the above in the Kaza village from which water is released as and when required. From the text In the semi-arid and arid regions of Rajasthan, particularly in Bikaner, Palodi and Barmer, almost all the houses traditionally had underground tankas or tanks for storing drinking water. The tanks could be as large as a big room. One household in Palodi had a tank that was 6.1 meters deep, 4.27 meters long and 2.44 meters wide. The tankas were part of the well-developed rooftop rainwater harvesting system and were built inside the main house or the courtyard. They were connected to the sloping roofs of the houses through a pipe. Rain falling on the rooftops would travel down the pipe and was stored in these underground tankas. The first spell of rain was usually not collected as this would clean the roofs and the pipes. The rainwater from the subsequent showers was then collected. The rainwater can be stored in the tankas till the next rainfall making it an extremely reliable source of drinking water when all other sources are dried up particularly in the summers. Rainwater or palarpani, as commonly referred to in these parts, is considered the purest form of natural water. Many houses constructed underground rooms adjoining the tanka to beat the summer heat as it would keep the room cool. In the box, we have a very interesting fact. 
rooftop rainwater harvesting is the most common practice in Shillong, Meghalaya. It is interesting because Cherrapunji and Mosinram, situated at a distance of 55 km from Shillong, receives the highest rainfall in the world. Yet, the state capital Shillong faces acute shortage of water. Nearly every household in the city has a rooftop rainwater harvesting structure. Nearly 15 to 25 percent of the total water requirement of the household comes from rooftop water harvesting. From the text again, Today in Western Rajasthan, sadly, the practice of rooftop rainwater harvesting is on the decline as plenty of water is available due to perennial Rajasthan Canal. Though some houses still maintain the tankas since they do not like the taste of tap water. Fortunately, in many parts of rural and urban India, Rooftop rainwater harvesting is being successfully adapted to store and conserve water. In Gentadur, a remote backward village in Mysuru, Karnataka, villagers have installed in their own households rooftop rainwater harvesting system to meet their water needs. Nearly 200 households have installed this system and the village has earned the rare distinction of being rich in rainwater. Figure 3.6 We have been given an image here for which the explanation goes like this. Rooftop harvesting was common across the towns and villages of Thar. Rainwater that falls on the sloping roofs of houses is taken through a pipe into an underground tanka, that is, circular holes in the ground. Built in the main house or in the courtyard, this picture shows water being taken from a neighbor's roof through a long pipe. Here, the neighbor's rooftop has been used for collection of rainwater. The picture shows a hole through which rainwater flows down into an underground tanka. For the better understanding of the rooftop rainwater harvesting system, which is adapted here, Genatur receives an annual precipitation of 1000 mm. And with 80% of collection efficiency and of about 10 fillings, every house can collect and use about 50,000 litres of water annually. From the 20 houses, the net amount of rainwater harvested annually amounts to 1 lakh litres. Page 32 We have sets of picture showing the traditional method of drip irrigation in Meghalaya. Bamboo Drip Irrigation System In Meghalaya, a 200-year-old system of tapping stream and spring water by using bamboo pipes is prevalent. About 18 to 20 litres of water enters the bamboo pipe system, gets transported over hundreds of metres and finally reduces to 20 to 80 drops per minute at the site of the plant. Picture 1 shows... Bamboo pipes are used to divert perennial springs on the hilltops of the lower reaches by gravity. Picture 2 and 3. The channel sections made of bamboo divert water to the plant site where it is distributed into branches, again made and laid out with different forms of bamboo pipes. The flow of water into the pipes is controlled by manipulating the pipe positions. Picture 4. If the pipes pass a road, they are taken high above the land. Picture 5 and 6. Reduced channel sections and diversion units are used at the last stage of water application. The last channel section enables water to be dropped near the root of the plant. Figure 3.7 From the box an interesting fact is given here. Tamil Nadu is the first state in India 
which has made rooftop rainwater harvesting structure compulsory to all the houses across the state. There are legal provisions to punish the defaulters. Activity Activity number one. Collect information on how industries are polluting our water resources. Activity two. Enact with your classmates a scene of water dispute in your locality. Activity. Find out other rainwater harvesting systems existing in and around your locality. Page 33. Exercises. Question 1. Multiple choice questions. Question 1 of 1. Based on the information given below, classify each of the situations as suffering from water scarcity or not suffering from water scarcity. Four choices are given. A. Region with high annual rainfall. B. Region having high annual rainfall and large population. C. Region having high annual rainfall but water is highly polluted. And D. Region having low rainfall and low population. Question 2 of 1. Which of the following statements is not an argument in favour of multipurpose river projects? The four choices are given. A. Multipurpose projects bring water to those areas which suffer from water scarcity. B. Multipurpose projects by regulating water flow helps to control floods. C. Multipurpose projects lead to large-scale displacements and loss of livelihood. And D. Multipurpose projects generate electricity for our industries and our homes. Question 3 of 1. Here are some false statements. Identify the mistakes and rewrite them correctly. A. Multiplying urban centers with large and dense populations and urban lifestyles have helped in proper utilization of water resources. B. Regulating the damming of rivers does not affect the river's natural flow and its sediment flow. C. In Gujarat, the Sabarmati Basin farmers were not agitated when higher priority was given to water supply in urban areas, particularly during droughts. D. Today in Rajasthan, the practice of rooftop rainwater harvesting was gained popularity despite high water availability due to the Rajasthan Canal. Question 2. Answer the following questions in about 30 words. Question 1 of 2. Explain how water becomes a renewable resource. Question 2 of 2. What is water scarcity and what are its main causes? Question 3 of 2. Compare the advantages and disadvantages of multipurpose river projects. Question 3. Answer the following questions in about 120 words. Question 1 of 3. Discuss how rainwater harvesting in semi-arid regions of Rajasthan is carried out. Question 2 of 3. Describe how modern adaptations of traditional rainwater harvesting methods are being carried out to conserve and store water. You were just listening to Chapter 3, Water Resources, that contained 11 pages. This chapter was read by Shiba Mal. Recorded by Shanu Muksim, Program Assistance, Vimlesh Chaudhary, produced by Ajit Horo. This chapter is brought to you by CIET, NCERT, New Delhi. Thank you.